Hello folks, welcome back. For I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here wearing a Bullet Club shirt. So guess who we saw today? B -b -b Bullet Club. For life. They're too sweet for life. Yes, life. Yes. It's here again. Is that, is that show again? Again, time to talk about some AEW. But first, I do have some bleed. Thanks you to, to get out there. Cadence Graphics. Sir, thank you very much for your subscription. Again, if you subscribe, you get a little shout out video. Because Caden, he was the first one. He always wins twice. So he gets that six count. And Kobe talks. Again, I so appreciate the comments. You, sir, are definitely a master of the air guitar. Baron, 
You're just there chilling out with your briefcase boombox. And Breath Redemption. You, sir, have those dirty thoughts like I do about Taya Conti. You, sir, can crawl out of here. Let's talk about some AEW. They've seemed to change up the format of the show, which is, is good. Confusing, but good. Um, it's beginning to mirror a little bit of WWE. Not as wrestling heavy. There were some segments. Uh, the talking segments were actually pretty short, with, with the exception of one, which, which we'll get to. So, a little bit different changing things up. Uh, a little bit different mood. For the mood is about to change. Yes. So let's start. So actually, I was surprised. This show, this show started off Pac versus Eddie Kingston. Wow. What a way to get a crowd excited. This was actually really amazing. Um, starts off, Pac and Eddie just go at each other. Pac gets tossed out to, to the uh, outside of the ring. Uh, Eddie Kingston, he's a distraction to the ref. And the bunny... But Bunny actually does wrestling stuff. She started to rake the eyes with those long fingernails of pack, causing excruciating pain. That was good. That was different. That was different. They're actually using the Bunny more as, as a, a, a wrestler versus just being the distraction. I like originality. Well, I like different things at least. I wouldn't say that this this is not like having the having the manager be the heel is not necessarily an original thought, but with this and this instance, it probably is. Um, from there, you have the Lucha Brothers kind of shooing away the bunny, the blade and the butcher get involved. So then all of a sudden, you have the blade and butcher on one side. You have the Lucha Brothers on the other side. You have Pac and Kingston right there between them on the outside of the ring. Eventually, they do get back inside the ring. Once inside the ring, Pac just takes advantage. Pac, that's the right way to throw yes kicks right to the middle of the chest. Oh, oh, he throws them with force, too. Not to the head like one Brie Bella does. But, yeah, Pac is so good. Hits a superplex, gets a two count off that. Again, once inside the ring, Pac really takes control of the match. Um... He's such a heavy striker. So good. He gets Eddie Kingston in the corner. Sets him up for the for the black arrow. Hits the black arrow. Not only does he get the three count. But now he just wants to punish Eddie Kingston. CZW Eddie Kingston gets hurt. Or gets punished. Gets beat, beat on a little bit more. A little after the ring shenanigans. After the bell for the three count shenanigans. By Pocky Locks in the brutalizer. I'm going to stop right there because this match, the way it is, is actually a surf and turf match. What confused me is that even though Pac and Muerta de la, del, del Triangular or Triangular de la Muerta started to beat up the Butcher, the Blade, and Eddie Kingston... Archer got involved? And it's just like, why? They have things in hand. He just shows up for his two cents. Jake the Snake kind of stumbles out to the ringside. He kind of like hobbles out and out. I don't know why Lance Archer was there. That that, that was kind of confusing. But, oh, well, it is what it is. Maybe it's going to set up something between Pac and Archer later. I mean, you can only hope so, I guess. Again, the match was good. That, however, that end, uh, that was weird. Then we had uh, Miro taking on Chuck Taylor. Remember, if Chuck Taylor loses, he has to be the butler. Chuck Taylor goes right after Miro. Heavy strikes. Flies over the top rope. Sends, um, sends Miro in, in, into the bike rack, which acts as a barricade for AEW. 
Again, it's a bicycle rack, folks. It's, it's not at least in at least in impact they call it. You have the bike rack that acts as a barricade. AEW, I don't know, whatever. Um, however, when they get back in the ring, he, uh, Chuck Taylor brings it back into the ring because that's where he can win. He returns the tables and him uh, has a big leg lariat, macho kick, pounds on Chuck Taylor some more. Gets him in the camel clutch of the accolade, and that was it. I'm like, I look at the clock, I'm like, whoa. That was a fast match. Miro wins. Chuck Taylor now has to be Miro's um, young lion or, or young boy. And, and the butler for a certain amount of time. I don't know. I, I could I could see Miro winning. Maybe not. I don't know. Probably in this fashion, I guess. I just figured the match would be a little bit longer. You get a little bit like Orange Cassidy would get involved. Uh, Kip Sabian, even Penelope Ford might try and get their two cents in. This was for the most part a clean win. It's just shock, just shocking. Um, it really didn't showcase either talent though. It's a ham sandwich. I know not a lot of people will agree with that, but I mean, hey, it's just one guy's opinion. If you want to air your grievances or tell your opinion, you can always leave a comment. Eventually, I will check emails and I will give some shout outs to those people that sent that sent a long time ago emails. Whenever I find time to check it, actually. But yeah, then we had a couple of promos. The Hardy Party. They started to argue about the contract. Uh, Matt Hardy takes thirty percent of everything. Uh, that includes third party stuff. At least private parties allowed to do third party stuff. Who knows? Then the inner circle they they want they start to get the new year resolution. Uh, Jake Hagar is like he wants championships. <laughs> MJF is typical MJF. He wants fat people to leave. Wait a second. Then you'll have no fans coming to AEW shows, especially here in Daytona Beach. Um. Ortiz wants to learn how to cook a sofrito. It's like his his his, his grandmother used to. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Um, and that was kind of then he kind of broke down. They started arguing. Then they have a tag team triple threat. Um, whoever wins that's going to go for the tag team. They're just going to settle things by fighting. Eventually, I hope they do this the right way and have this go for a year. Have MJF turn on Jericho after, or at least a, it has to be a couple of months after Jericho kind of starts losing and the inner circle degrades and degrades, and now they're kind of that joke thing like the Dark Order is right now, uh, minus all Brody Lee stuff. But yeah, this was okay. Then the Dark Order they start to talk about Hangman and Adam Page how. They want him to be that their partner. Like, when are you going to join us, Adam Page? We'll see. Then there was a recap of the Taz and Darby Allen stuff. That was pretty good. Then we had a Bullet Club promo. Because once you're Bullet Club, you are Bullet Club for life. Uh, it was a six-man tag, and actually this match probably went on longer than it should have, considering who was in it, and I'll come back to that. It's Kenny Omega, and not the Young Bucks. It was the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows, Yes, and in fact, just to show you, just to let you know how great Gallows, or Gallows, and or at least Carl, Anderson is. Let's see. I'm going to play some background music throughout this entire segment. So let me move. Oh, wow. There, that does make a difference where that mic goes. So let's see here. Um, bear with me. We are having technical difficulties. Blah, blah, blah. I got a new mag. I shot it with my gun. I got a new mag. Oh, wait, here we go. 
Let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah. Machine gun. So yes. So again, while this music plays, again, it's the only proper way to do a Gallows and Anderson tag team match is that you have to have the, the Machine Gunners theme song play throughout the match. So hopefully you guys can still hear me. But yeah, because we're listening to Never Alone. Yeah, so in this match, uh, Danny Limelight got shot off the rope. Uh, he showed some potential. He hit a Mexican arm. Um, he started off as really a straight brawl, which was good to see. Even though the Bullet Club, because they're too sweet, should definitely dominate any brawl. Uh, Danny Limelight, he gets shot off into the rope. He counters Kenny, hits a Mexican arm drag. That's okay. Then he gets stuck by Doc Gallows, the way it should be. Uh, can't. Then um, the varsity, varsity varsity blondes. That's right. I almost want to say varsity blues. Varsity blondes uh, get in the ring. They they hit the double. I did like that. They did the double axe handle from the top rope onto the arm of Kenny Omega. Uh, Omega hit hit a flying famer citadel off the ropes. Carl Anderson and then the master of the headlock. Uh, we get that going to the break. Then it was a triple splash by the Bullet Club. That really should have ended the match. Um, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later, or actually relatively soon. Uh, Pillman does a diving shoulder tackle, very reminiscent of his dad in his, in his dad's early days. Uh, Varsity Blues, they hit that flipping neck breaker, almost like the heart attack by the Heart Foundation. Uh, the Bullet Club and just triple assist and neck breaker. Uh, Limelight eats a spine buster. Garrison gets caught in the magic killer. And Carl Anderson, he's never alone. Never alone. Never alone. Never alone. As the Bullet Club, or the Elite, whatever they're called, are still the Bullet Club to me. Again, because they are for life. Yes. So uh, that's that's the magic of video editing. See, so, yes, that was that was good, but that's a little too much now. Yeah. So let's move this microphone back to where it properly should be. Oh wow. <laughs> this is a this is a big interview, Mike. That's, I do like, I, that's, that's like the best Christmas gift I've gotten in a while. But yeah, um, so the Elite one, I thought it was too long of a match. Mainly you have, uh, the Young Bucks didn't show up, then a brawl, uh, uh, brawl and Susan on the outside. We'll get to that. But this match overall, it was, it was good. It was a cheeseburger match. When Moxley comes in, he wants a little revenge. He gets involved. He gets beat up, and the Lucha Brothers make the save. And then it's a no hold bars brawl. Um, everyone everyone into the ring. Uh, the Young Bucks show up. They eat super kicks from the Lucha Brothers. Continuation of all they've done again here in AEW and probably in AAA. So it's really good to see. And then we have the waiting room. Oh my god. Gosh gee Wilkers. <laughs> this is one of those rare things in pro wrestling where it's it's so terrible it's actually good. You cross the line between it being boring, between being bad, and then to the point where you just have to laugh. If that's what Britt Baker's trying to do, she nailed it. Uh, it was kind of funny because in the waiting room, you have a Rebel announcing everything. Britt Baker's there. She brings in Cody Rose. They have little sparklers. So they have um, the contractually obligated pyro. Um, 
And Rubble just laughs. Ha 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 I can't even do that laugh. That's how like, everyone. Whoa, what the hell's that? Rebel stole the show with her laugh. That was funny. Um, Jed Cargill came in, slapped Cody Rhodes, said, Yeah, guess what? I feel upset. I can't fight Brandy. I want to fight someone else now. Uh, Velvet Sky like like runs in, brawl ensues. Then Britt Baker shows a little bit of uh, Thunder, uh, what happened between her and Thunder Rosa in the um, pavilion of the Daily Center. Yeah, I guess that's what you call it. Or, oh, what's that other fancy word? Yeah, let's call it the pavilion of, of the um, Daily Center. And then Thunder Rosa comes on. Thunder Rosa's hot. She sounds sexy when she speaks angry Latin. Angry, angry Spanish. And her face paint makes her look hot, too. You've seen her without her face paint. Not so hot. With face paint, hot. Speaking angrily in Spanish with face paint is muy caliente. Hot, hot, hot. She's en fuego. So yeah, and Britt Baker's like, I never want this, Tony. Tony, you said this wasn't going to happen. So she becomes whiny, whiny heel again. And then we have uh, Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt taking on FTR, CL. Um, Marco, he just gets, he like throws the double bird at FTR. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. Oh, you think that's funny? You think that's funny? I'm gonna show you both now. So yeah, um, he was just being annoying. He just he needed to get tossed around like he did. Um, he smacked Dax. Um, bad idea. And then the in the best JR, he he got he got clubbered. Poor Marco Stunt got clubbered. He got picked up by the hair and down again. He went. Um, he was just getting tossed around. Uh, Marco Stunt would try and do something, but Wheeler was big enough and strong enough to really catch him. Again, Marco Stunt's like a little girl, so yeah, you can like catch him and toss him around like a rag doll. Eventually, Jungle Boy does get the hot tag in, and they do do their tag team action moves. They they have their whole tag team routine. Um, they have their whole set of. Uh, moves they do, which actually looks really good and actually plays to the strength of Marco Stunt. Mainly the fact that Marco Stunt is being used as a human weapon, but it still plays to his his few strengths, nonetheless. Then, let's see, a couple dives by Jurassic Express. Marco gets softened up again. Jungle Boy gets in. It's a few moves. Then... <laughs> Marco goes outside. Tully, Tully practically killed poor Marco Stunt. Um, that, that wasn't even funny. And then eventually, yeah, they did something else. Dax, again, gets, gets nailed by an assisted senton. And then Tully Blanchard kills poor Marco Stunt on the outside. And then uh, it's this shatter machine on Marco Stunt. FTR win. The right, the right team won. Marco Sun was a little too crazy. Good solid cheeseburger match, though. And probably, besides the main event, probably the best match of the night was Ty Conti versus Serena Deeb. Oh my goodness. Ty Conti's hot. Like, her. She's Brazilian. I can tell now. Yes. I think <laughs> we were joking on Wutu how, how, how Taya Conti's booty actually broke the stream. Taya Conti is an amazingly beautiful woman. She's all woman, too. I like that. Serena Deeb's like, like, I don't know, like, like motherly milf hot. But Taya Conti. She's, I'm going to break you because I'm Brazilian hot. Yeah. Um, Ty uh, first puts Serena Deeb in the triangle. Ty can put me in the triangle hot too. Uh, Conti hit a, 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 pump, a pump kick. 
That looked legit, legit. Sarah Deeb sold that for everything it was worth. That was really good. In fact, it was because of the way these two women worked together, the way they sold everything. Uh, there were some few slip-up moments, but no real botch. And it was so good to see. Uh, there was a full Nelson stunner, or the attempted full Nelson stunner by Ty Conti. Serena Deeb went for the gory special in the ropes when she made her comeback. Eventually, uh, Serena Deeb hit, hit the detox after trying to go for the stretch muffler on Taya Conti. Hit the detox. Serena Deeb won. Taya Conti should feel no shame. I'll tell you what, I was shocked. If this is what AEW is going to keep on continuing to do with their women and build their women's division up like this, it's going to be all good. You just can't have... Bad wrestling, and Ty Conti is actually really good. Um, her and Serena Deeb, they obviously have some good interactions with each other. Ty Conti's look is 100% amazing. Even though as the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu girl in NXT, especially when she was with um, Antonia Rua and, and, and Cesaro Bonanno, uh, Bonani, or, or whatever his name was. He's been there once in like AEW. She looked great with them as the heel manager. She looks great now in AEW now that they're saying, okay, we'll, we'll, take, we'll, we'll give you uh, leeway as to do what you want to do. She's running with it and is doing really good. I'll tell you what, this, folks, and I don't say this often about AEW women's matches, but this was actually a cheeseburger match. And why NXT wouldn't let Ty, uh, 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 Tani Conti do this in NXTs and, and she would just be jobber to people? I don't know. Something. Sometimes I wonder about Paul Levesque if, if, if Vince is in, is in his ear too much. But who knows? Neither here nor there. Then for the main event of the evening, we have Brian Cage, the machine, taking on Darby Allen. Um, this was pretty good. Darby Allen starts off hot. He gets Brian Cage out of the ring. Does does a dive onto it. Dive onto him. However, Cage caught the second dive. And then just hit this amazing outside suplex. Suplex. He just literally throws poor little Darby, Ballon, Darby Allen back into the ring. And Cage literally lifts him over his head. Throws him in a gorilla press fashion. A good, geez, 10 feet through a table. Not underneath the table. He was still going. And he went through the table. Darby Allen got busted open. I don't know if that was from the table or the stuff on the table. Or if he actually did the blade job. Darby Allen's a little weird like that. Again, he likes to be put in body bags with thumbtacks. You don't know where those thumbtacks go when it's dark. I don't care. Thumbtacks in the wrong place hurt. Yes. Um... So yeah, it looks like Darby Allen was just being dragged around. He's just being tossed around. Um, then he was uh, Brian Cage went out, carried him out suplex style, like I would carry my nephews around. Jesus. Then yeah, suplex, suplex him back into the ring, release German suplex, and then just tosses Darby around. Um, Darby again. He was primed by the suplex. That was amazing. I mean, eventually Cage... This is when Huber shows up. Cage goes to set up the steps. He was going to, like, um, probably do something... Driver... Some kind of driver onto the steel steps on the outside. But no, Darby Allen counters that. Bites his hand. Forces Cage to fall on top of the steps where Darby Allen then hits a coffin drop. This was really good because this is probably the only way that Darby Allen legit could have won as if he employed some kind of tactic like this. It was smart, and it worked. Uh, from there, Brian Cage tried to put him in a bear hug. He just spit him in the head. That's That was so good to see. Then he had a Lucha Destroyer on Cage, a shotgun drop kick. Um, the other members of Team Taz try and get involved. Sting shows up, nails Ricky Starks the baseball bat. Darby Allen and Brian Cage go up to the top rope. Darby Allen hits the crucifix bomb from the top rope. I was shocked. That, that was the finish of the match. 
again, it took a lot from Darby Allen. Not, I could have sworn this was this would probably be a, a dusty finish or a wonky finish, but because it was a clean finish, it kind of surprised me. Probably not. Top ropes crucifix bomb is pretty big move too. I'll tell you what, this was another good surf and turf match. I don't see if these, this leads anywhere with Sting. And that was AEW. I'll tell you what, a surprisingly quick show to watch, with the exception of plugging in the uh, uh, the big show, the big show show every so often. Terrible. Um, so tomorrow um, we'll have probably El Vagabundo here to do his impact predictions. I may or may not be here Saturday Saturday night for. Um, the show I'm going to uh, over our friends by noon. I might leave by six. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm tired. You mind if I just chillax at my house? I'll Skype you and stuff. And, and actually, I just want to watch the wrestling show, too. So she'll probably be cool about it. Spend Actually, like like noon to six is a good six hours with her. So that's, that's cool. Um, yeah, Friday is my normal SmackDown show. So we'll see. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully I get this video up.